Taj here from CPM Solutions coming at you with another Primavera video tutorial. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about a situation that happens quite often in many industries. That situation is linking multiple projects up to work together, interrelating those projects so that they can work as one. I see this all the time when I work with clients. We have a client who wants to have a master project plan with sub project plans underneath just like I'm showing here. I've got a master project and I've got sub project one and sub project two. How can I link those projects up so that the master project essentially contains a summary or all of the sub projects all together and can I have those projects work as though they're one big master? Well absolutely you can. So the situation we're looking at here is subproject one has got these activities, subproject two has got a bunch of other stuff. And actually the master project just has this one activity which summarizes the whole shebang, summarizes everything up. 244 days, here's my total start, my end date for the entire project. So today we're going to dig in with an example to show you how we can set something like this up. Let's get started. By the way, folks, just thought we'd mention, we don't just do excellent tutorials. We also have online learning courses for Primavera. Go ahead and check out cpmsolutions.ca slash e-learning. Okay, let's move on. So let's go on over to the projects window. Let's check out these two projects I've got here, project phase A and project phase B. Let's get those open up. So here we go. We've got two simple projects. Uh, project phase A, we've got design, plan, build, commission, closeout, bunch of durations in there. Nothing scheduled, nothing's linked together with activity uh, relationships yet. And then I've got down here in project phase B, a budget, baseline, bonuses. Now the one thing I want you to notice is that these guys over here in phase B are only um, finished milestones at this point. Okay, so let's start by getting some things linked up here. I'm going to go ahead and select all these activities. I'm going to right click, go on down to link activities. I'm then going to go ahead and schedule this project. Let's see what happens when I expand things out. Boom, I've got an expanded Gantt chart. There we go. So things are linking up already. Now, next step then is to link these milestones up down here in place. So I'm going to bring up the bottom half of my screen here, make a little bit of room. These milestones down here, I'd like them to link up with phase A. So I'm going to interlink these two projects. My budget milestone I'd like to occur as soon as my design is done. So once I'm done my design, I should have a budget in place as well. So what I'll do is I will assign a predecessor of design and I will make it a uh, sorry, finish to finish relationship. We'll go ahead and we'll schedule that and boom. That puts my budget milestone where I want it. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing with a baseline. I'm going to make the baseline be uh, show up in the project after the planning is done. So again, I put it in there. I can make it a finish to finish so that these two finish at the same time. Schedule the project. Let's see what happens. All right. So there's my baseline milestone. Now bonuses are going to occur after I've done my commissioning. So let's go ahead. That's when we get paid out, our bonus payouts. Everybody likes payday. Put that in there. Again, finish to finish. Schedule the project. Great. Now let's uh, make a little room here. Let's trim things down a little bit so we can get the whole project looking together. The nice thing about Primavera is that a project is just a compilation of activities. And those activities just sit in the database somewhere. So activities are really kind of wrapped in a project wrapper. But if I've got this project wrapping these ones and this project wrapping these ones, because they're all in the same database, it's really easy for these two projects to kind of work together as one. 
so here's what we can do to get a visual of that. I can go in here, I'm going to turn off my group and sort. And I'm going to go ahead and organize these by start date. And now I get a visual on the project with the activities interrelated and showing up on the Gantt chart where I want them to. So essentially, I can work with these two projects as though they're one in this, in this fashion. Now, let's dive into some more interesting things. The next step we're going to do is we're going to go and create some baselines for these projects. So again, I'll go up here to maintain baselines. I've got my phase A project, my phase B. So let's go ahead and add in a baseline for project phase A. Vera's doing a little bit of thinking. There it is. Okay, we'll call this call this my initial plan. Go ahead, do the same thing for phase B. Great, those are created. Next thing to do is to go and assign those baselines to the projects. So here in my assigned baseline, you'll notice I've got two projects I can choose up here. So that's just a little word of warning in case you forget. So project A gets the phase A baseline and project B gets the phase B baseline. I'll go ahead and assign those. Now let's check them out on the Gantt chart. All I want to do is add in project baseline bars and I also have some milestone bars down here. And I know I need to make a little change here and set this to project. Okay, so there's my baselines displayed on the Gantt chart as well. I'm going to go ahead and put on my WBS group and sort once again. Now let's say I make a change to one of these projects. Let's say I turn, turn my... Uh, re-estimate my design down to five days. If I schedule this, you're not going to be too shocked to see that my baselines move as well. There is linkages between these two projects and as I make a change to one, it affects the other. Now here's what's really interesting is what if I choose to just work with one project at a time? So let's go and just open up phase A. Now I just have phase A open. The other project is closed. How does this work in Primavera? What happens if I make changes to a, one project? How do they get reflected in the other? Well, here's what we'll do. We'll take our commissions and we're going to, well, you know what, we'll make it even simpler. Let's uh, increase our design to 15 days. Go ahead and reschedule this. We can see the changes versus the baseline here. What happened to project B? Phase B. Let's go and check it out. To me, these are the same dates that we had before when I had changed things down to five days. But if I reschedule this project on its own, what do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. Exactly right. If you guessed Primavera picks up the changes in the other project, even though it's not open, automatically. So I can control here through the scheduling feature when this project picks up those updates and whatnot. So this project gets reflected when it's scheduled based on the other project. Now this is really very nice functionality to have. It's nice that you can control when you hit the schedule button. It's nice that you can set a baseline and see how things have shifted and whatnot. Okay, let's open up both projects again. So what I want you to start thinking about here is scenarios that you encounter all the time. Perhaps phase A belongs to a subcontractor. So they're off working in their own Primavera database with this data, and this data comes to you uh, in the form of a NXCR export on a weekly basis, perhaps. So you can see how you can have your section of the project linked to it, and when they send you an updated one, you just got to make sure you go into yours, open it up, schedule, and you can see the changes. You make sure you do a baseline first so that you recognize where things have changed. Okay? So this is the kind of process we're going to start thinking about. Now, how do I get a summary of the whole thing? How do I get that master project? How do I get the summary 
of uh, the whole project or both projects put together. Well, some nice features in here. If I go into my group and sort, right off the bat, there is this show grand totals checkbox. You'll notice when I turn that on, I get this total up here. Uh, let's go see what that looks like. What that does is it actually puts this total bar up at the top, and that total bar summarizes both projects for me together. Okay, So I can see 90-day total. Interestingly enough, in this project, it matches the same as the phase A. So it's easy to get that total bar up at the top by just going in there and turning on show grand totals. So if you didn't know about that, go play with that. I'm going to turn that off, though. What I'd like to do is I'd like to, again, have an independent project that summarizes all of these. So how do I do that? Well, let's go back to projects here. I'm going to quickly whip out a new master project. Call this Master AA. I got to pick clever names because I may have uh, similarly named projects already in here. And you know what? I don't need to go through all that stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and click finish. So notice I've got my new Master AA project created. Uh, also notice here that it's already open for editing. Now let's go back into activities. Okay, have a look here. My Master AA project is down here at the bottom. How do I get it up at the top? Well, one thing I could do is um, what we want to do actually is we want to go in here and we want to turn on this sort bands alphabetically. Now one thing about this is this may sort all your WBS bands alphabetically. However, for me it's producing the desired result I want. It puts the master AA project up at the top. So that's one way we could do this. What's another way? Let's go explore. The other way to do this is actually to use the organizing power of the WBS. So if I go into my WBS window, I can see how my projects are listed here, and I can use the arrows to organize them any way I want. So if I want Master AA, Phase A, Phase B, I could, uh, again, reorganize these any way I want. I can have them like that if I wanted, etc. So use the arrows over here in the WBS window, the Work Breakdown Structure, to organize those. Come back in here. Here's my Master AA project. I'm going to create a new activity for it. I'm going to call it the summary activity. Summary activity. Now, if you're not familiar with this activity type called the level of effort, this is a great time to go and check out some of the other tutorials we've created, especially the one about level of effort activities. This is a great time to use a level of effort. I want this activity to basically summarize all of design all the way down to close out, including the bonuses and whatnot. So what I'll do is I'll create a level of effort activity, go in here, assign a predecessor of design, make it a start to start, assign in the successor of close out, make it a finish to finish. Okay, let's go ahead and schedule this. Keep your eyes on the original duration and these dates up here as I schedule. That's a little bit better. That's the result I'm looking for. Okay, so I've got the 15th to June 20th, 90 days. And now my master project summarizes the both projects together and I've got the re desired result that I'm looking for here. Go ahead and play with interlinking projects together. You're going to get really good at it. Don't be afraid to mess around in Primavera. I'm Michael LaPaz with another video tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. Have a great day.